David Lammy on LBC. Another one here, Sue in West Hampstead. David, my large group practice in Hampstead, North West London, has been amazing right through all the COVID lockdowns. I had a really bad leg infection and had the care care I was care I got was fantastic. A mixture of emails with photos, phone calls, and face to face. There are no problems getting through uh, on the phone or getting a call back an hour or two later. It's this, it's this business of patchiness that I talked about. Many people calling in to say that actually their experience is fantastic, they like the new system, it's working well, the new triage. But some people, certainly indicating in social media that things are not great. Oh, someone else says, uh, come on, David, don't let the GPs get away with this. They need to see patients and provide a proper service. Don't let them play the violins. Someone's giving me a hard time there. Uh, Dr. Bob Gill in Sidcup. Dr. Bob Gill. Bob, what's your view? So we we have a uh, crisis within general practice, which is, uh, I believe, engineered for political ends because we're we're quite far down the road to privatising the NHS and we need scapegoats. And the GPs are those scapegoats, are they? Yeah, the GPs are, are the scapegoats. They've fallen into a trap set by government, which was to go to provide only virtual services at the beginning of the pandemic. They've also implemented this e-consultation nonsense, which which is no substitute for face-to-face consultation. And as uh, you know, the crisis, which was building in terms of unmet demand, continues. GPs were were at the brunt of all of this. I mean, really? I mean, that's a sort of conspiracy theory. I mean, obviously, well, there are GPs who didn't want to see patients at the beginning. Right? They didn't know how serious the new COVID uh, um, uh, epidemic was. They didn't want to get it themselves. So there were lots of reasons why they might not see patients at the beginning of the crisis, surely. Yeah, well, they were issued clear instruction not to see patients. They were told that the 111 service would take over the care. And that's where we are. So I'm not saying every GP has provided perfect service. In fact, where I work in Bexley, there are still surgeries with very limited access for face-to-face consultation. And there's there's no excuse for that. But we must understand why the right-wing press are making this into a very big issue. Because they they want to distract from their real agenda, which is actually what they consider face-to-face consultation is as a legacy system. This is how... GP services are discussed amongst policy circles as a legacy system to be replaced. Ah, That's the end game. I see. Now, of course, the the GPs were, if you like, they're not, they're part of the NHS working, providing services with the NHS, but they are, in a sense, private practice. So they were obviously... Um, a hybrid model um, attached to the NHS in the first place. Bob, is that right? Well, in 1948, the only way to get them to agree was to offer them this independent contractor status. But the reality is their terms and conditions, their income, uh, the fees that they were paid, their education, their training, their pensions is all provided by the state. It was only up until 2003-04 when there was a major contract change. And that introduced more of the commercial commercialization of general practice. So... As I say, there's been a transition. So now you can have private companies like Virgin take over practices. They're not doctors. Any commercial company can now come and provide primary care. That was never allowed up until 2003, 2004 with a new contract called APMS. Now, that wasn't the doctors who decided to do that. That was the government, and that was actually under the new Labour government in the mid-2000s. Thank you, Bob, for bringing us up to date, bringing that point of view. I Look, I hope this isn't some conspiracy to get rid of our general practice uh, and bringing a whole load of companies. That's not what we want at all. I'm stand against that. David Lammy on LBC.